You write JavaScript in a simple text editor and you save it without compiling, typically as a .js file. And these are most commonly included in HTML pages, which are basically web pages. So on the left here, I've got a really popular text editor called Sublime Text, which is free. And on the right, I've got Google Chrome. Actual JavaScript code sits within script tags. You always put a semicolon at the end of what we call a statement or a line. Let's start by using variables to define values or pieces of data. Var something, and then let's assign it a value word. You can use let and also const. These are probably outside the scope of this tutorial. They're block scoped. Const means constant, as in something that you wouldn't change. But for now, let's just stick with var. Most browsers nowadays have what's called a dev console. This lets us look at the output of code by clicking on this menu here, going to more tools, and then clicking on developer tools. If we do something like console.log, which lets us output into this console here. If I then save that, and then if I refresh this page, you can see that I've got word coming out here. This is more commonly known as a string, and it can be any sort of characters, really numbers, anything. It doesn't really matter as long as it's got these quotes around it. Also, it can be a number like 100, and then you don't need quotes around it. And we can do adding something, which is 100, to another value, which is 50. As well as adding, we can do the usual math operations like minus, we can divide, we can multiply, and we can find the remainder after doing a division. You can reassign the values of a variable uh, by just typing the name of it again and using a single equal sign to say it's now going to be 200. You can also quickly increment or decrement these values by saying something plus plus. Again, you can see it's 202. We can do minus minus to take one off it, 198. If you have a string, you can find out its length. So you see here it's calculated that there's nine characters. You can also grab a portion of the string by using the substring function. And you can say, I want to grab from position zero, which is the start, through to position three, SOM. And that's the contents of this variable here. You work with things called arrays and objects. You create arrays like this, square brackets, and you create objects with curly brackets. Think of objects as things that would be objects in real life and think of arrays as sort of list of data. Arrays contain values or entries and objects contain what are called properties. And those properties can be anything really. They can be other arrays or other objects or just normal values. And they can even be functions. And if they are functions, then those functions are called methods. You can control the flow of your application by creating a small chunks of code and they're called functions and we have curly brackets to show that this would be where the code sits. You can call it later on by saying some func with open bracket, close bracket, semicolon like that. You can see it's printing out in a function because we've called that function, so it's run. When you have a function, you can say that you want parameters passed into the function, and then in the call to the function itself, you can pass through values so we can say, let's print out B, whatever B is going to be. And in this case, we pass through BBB. It's gone in here, and then it's being printed out here. You typically will use if statements to control whether something should happen. So it's a kind of condition. If conditional number is more than five. That means if this evaluates to be true, then whatever's in here is going to run. You can see we've got true coming out. And in the same way, we can do less than, we can do less than or equals to, and we can do more than or equals to. And you can also do not equals to, like this. Or you can do exactly equals to, like this. 
or you can do exactly equals to and the same object type like this. So in this case, it's not going to run. Change this to be five. Of course, it's true again. Okay, so let's create a for loop. So we're going to create a counter. We're going to say start with zero. We only want to run this loop while the counter is less than 10. So we're going to get this to run 10 times. And for each time it runs around the loop, we want it to increase the counter, which is i, by one. Every time this loop happens, we're going to rerun the code that's in between these curly brackets here. Learning JavaScript. We've got 10 outputs of learning JavaScript. We can, however, now say, add on the counter. Each time round, it increments. And finally, the last one we have is nine. And that's the case because earlier when we set this condition, we said only run the loop while the counter is less than 10. And it's very common to see pop-up boxes on websites. And these are just simple alerts like this. And if we run this now, we get the page is saying done. Thanks for watching. If you've learnt anything here, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing further tutorials. Thanks.